Hey there, if you're ever out on a day like this and want to take a great sunset photo of something like this, then watch this video and you're going to learn how to right now. Hey there, I'm Terrence from Photography in 123. If this is the first time to this channel, it's all about showing you how to use your camera properly, how to take great photos, and keep up with all the new gear trends. If that sounds good to you, then subscribe so you'll stay up to date with all the videos that I release. What I love about sunsets is they actually, they just look fantastic. Whether you're going to print them out, put them on the background of your computer, or frankly just post them to Instagram or Facebook, they look stunning. You don't necessarily need to have a calm ocean too for great sunset photos. As you can see from my shots here, I have some that they have the oceans just going crazy, or in this case it's a, it's a great lake going crazy, lots of waves, and there's different ways you can play around with your settings so you can get some really, really cool photos. So I'm going to go back to my computer and I'm going to actually go through a bunch of my photos and show you how to take these different photos and what settings you need to have and what gear you should have with you ideally. Okay, now that I'm inside, it's a lot quieter, the waves aren't crashing behind me. I can start going through all of my photos and my techniques and show you how to take some great sunset photos. But before I start, I want to let you know you can actually download a guide I created so you can have these techniques with you all the time. It's called Six Secrets to Instantly Stunning Sunsets. Go to the link below and you can get a free PDF copy right now to put on your phone, on your computer, or any other device. The first thing you're going to want to consider when you're out there is stability of your camera. While you may think you might take these shots handheld, the reality of it is the shutter speed you're going to need is going to be slow enough that having it handheld will cause issues with your photo. So if you know you're going to the beach or somewhere where there's a great sunset to take shots, you want to take your tripod with you. The tripod's going to give you needed stability for these kinds of shots and it's going to give you a clean, crisp shot that's going to be super sharp. If you don't have a tripod, I've got some links below uh, to Amazon that's going to have a bunch of tripods. You want to get something that's decent quality, that's actually heavy, that's going to make it more stable. Uh, I like Manfrotto, but there's a couple of good brands out there. Uh, and you want to have a good uh, head on the tripod that's going to hold your camera. I use a ball head. Those are way better for doing very fast movement of your camera and uh, adjusting it in the right position quickly and easily. So go check that out if you don't have a tripod. Of course, if you come upon a situation that is a great sunset and you don't have your tripod with you, what you want to do is actually be creative and find a way to create stability for your camera. As you can see here, I got creative. I got a folding chair from the cottage I was at, I brought it down to the beach with me, unfolded it, and put it on its side. Then I was able to put the camera on the armrest, which was flat, and I had a great way to actually get stability for my camera and take some really great shots. You don't necessarily have to find a folding chair to do this. Any flat surface could do. Uh, in one case, I used a handrail that was at a patio when I was uh, in Grand Bend, Ontario at a little pub and that really worked well. Uh, any flat surface that's gonna give you a clear, unobstructed view of where your sunset is will really, really work well. But if you're really in a pinch and you really wanna take that great sunset photo but you don't have a flat surface nearby, you don't have a tripod with you, then check out the video that's coming on the link on the top right hand side of the screen. I created several videos showing people how to create really good stable shots without a tripod and without a flat surface. So check out these techniques and hopefully they'll help you. The next aspect of great sunset photos is to have a little piece of gear in your camera bag and that's a neutral density filter. What these filters do is they actually reduce the amount of light that's coming into your lens but they do that without affecting any of the color. This can particularly help you when you're trying to do longer exposures to create a cooler look and effect on your photo, but you don't want the sun to overexpose the photo. The next piece of gear you can consider is a remote shutter release. I talk about remote shutter releases in some of my other videos, but essentially what these do is they'll actually let you uh, take the photo without actually touching the camera because they're either uh, wired to your camera or wireless. And of course, by not touching your camera, that's going to reduce any movement in your camera, which is going to give you a cleaner, crisper photo. Uh, you could always use a timer on your camera as well, so you don't need one. But if you're interested in getting one, they're actually pretty cheap. I have a link down below where you can get one. I think those are all the key points you need about the gear. Now let's talk about the techniques you'll use. The first technique you'll probably be aware of, it's something called the rule of thirds. Uh, if you've taken any photography courses, read any books, or watched a few videos on YouTube, you probably know about this one. 
All the rule of thirds means is you want to have your photo having three main sections, that being the background, the foreground, and your subject. And in landscape, your foreground in a case like this is going to be up front on the bottom. So in this case, my foreground is the beach. The uh, subject is really the ocean is, uh, at least in my mind, that was the subject here. And the background is the sky with the sun. And I guess the sun could be considered uh, a secondary subject. How much space each of these items take in your photo really depends on what you're trying to go for. You generally start with a, a true view of taking a third and a third, a third of each. However, what I try to do is I try to give a little more space to the more interesting part of the photo. Uh, in this case, I was doing um, a technique to get a more of a silky effect on the crashing waves here in this photo and I thought it was more visually interesting. So I made that a little more predominant in the photo, but it really is going to depend. You're going to have to practice and use some uh, artistic subjectivity and use your eye to figure out what makes sense and get some practice doing that. Let's talk about settings now for a second. For aperture, I typically, but not always, but will often use a larger aperture value, meaning it's a smaller hole that's opening, which gives you a lot more detail in your photo. This specific photo was shot with f22, so it's actually a fair bit of detail. If you look at the beach, you can actually see uh, maybe not the video, but in the actual photo, you can see a lot more detail. Uh, also in the background, you can see a lot more detail. And it's just a um, much more detail-oriented photo rather than having that uh, bokeh that usually comes with uh, shallower apertures. To contrast, this photo you're looking at was shot at f14, so not as high an aperture, uh, more in the, the mid-scale. Still pretty small, um, so won't be quite as detailed as the other photo but you can kind of see the effect might be a little different. In this shot, once I set my aperture, what I would do is focus on one of the brighter parts of the scene and I'd pull my shutter release halfway down. What that'll do is it'll calculate what the value is automatically of the shutter speed so I can get the right exposure. And I would set the camera to be manual to have that aperture and that shutter speed once I have it exposed to one of the brighter spots of the photo. Jumping back to techniques for a minute, this photo has a good example to show you. What I always want to try to look for is some kind of visual interest in the photo. And while the sunset was stunning in this location, and just so you know, this was shot in Grand Bend, Ontario, Canada. Uh, Grand Bend is known for having some of the best sunsets around just because of its location uh, in the Northern Hemisphere and where it's at and the Great Lake there. It's fantastic. What I liked about this shot was the sailboat was sailing across and you see how I caught it not right in the middle because I didn't want the middle, you kind of want it on the side and you see the the water ripple behind it and you see the feel the motion a little bit of where it's going it's kind of setting off towards the sunset a bit or past the sunset and it gives it a lot of visual interest. I had taken some of these shots this day without the boat, not quite as good. Having the sailboat in there really made a big difference. If we jump back to the last photo I took, uh, I'm going to point out another effect you can create just using one setting change. So in the sailboat photo, I had a, uh, an aperture of f14 and that created a shutter speed of uh, 1 15th just because it was getting a little dark so I needed a slower shutter. Um, but based on the motion you can see in the photo, it really didn't make too much of an issue of, um, of any blurriness. Some of my other shots had to have a much higher shutter speed just because of the brightness. But in this case, even though it was a bit dark, what I did do is I used a neutral density filter, as I mentioned you should get, and I used a much slower shutter speed. So I used um, a 0.3 seconds in this case. And what that does for you is when you have waves that are much more active rather than still water, as I did in this case, it gives you a slightly silky effect. You can see the uh, waves here, it's much more silkier than one of the photos you saw earlier on of the same beach on the same day, uh, which were more uh, more sharp lined uh, in their formation or in their image quality. And this gives a really cool silky effect. I could have put another ND filter on or a few more and or a much more powerful one and set a much longer exposure to create even a silkier effect. It really depends what you want to go for but you have a lot of creative control by using ND filters and by changing your, uh, your uh, shutter length, your speed length. Using these techniques you just learned, you should be able to take some really stunning sunset photos this summer. Remember some of the key things I taught you. 
Uh, one is setting your aperture and your uh, speed and those are going to be able to control the effect you have in the photo but you want to make sure you have set your exposure to one of the brighter parts of the photo. You want to look for uh, points of visual interest. Uh, you know, photo on the left here for example is the uh, really the, the sun streaking across the sky down on the water then the closer water then on the reflection on the beach of the wet sand. So things like that make it pretty interesting or in the bottom right hand photo you see a very bright sunset and to the right a jet skier that's moving away from the center of the sun. Uh, things like that can make it interesting. Um, play with either slow or fast shutter speeds depending on whether you're trying to create some kind of effect of motion or silky water and just try a lot of different angles and try a lot of different shots to see what works for you and really try to work your artistic ability. Hope you have fun with this this summer, and if you uh, have any comments or questions, put them below. I'd love to answer it. Like and subscribe, and uh, of course, if you have some great photos, please uh, share some links for us. This has been uh, Terrence from Photography in 123. Have a great one.